to Tunbridge Wells Baptist Church Online. It's great to have you with us. A little bit later on, Duncan will be speaking to us on burning desire. But before that, we'll be seeing your contributions of what you are grateful to God for. If you're able to join us after the service, we're going to have our Zoom chat. Uh, the link will have been sent to you in the newsletter last Friday. And please keep watching after the service ends because there will be some um, information about what we're doing in the church and through the church this week. So don't miss it. Now, last Saturday afternoon, we met up with Grandma. That's David's mum. She doesn't live too far away from here and we went for a walk along the River Medway. We walked a little bit further than we intended as David assured us that there was another bridge not too far from here. Eventually we got to said bridge and you'll hopefully a picture will be coming up and you'll see him on the bridge there. Um, and as I was taking the picture, Grandma commented on the stillness of the water and the fact that we could actually see David really clearly reflected within it. And as we were standing there, Grandma shared with me a picture or some words that she believed that God gave to her quite a long time ago when she was walking along the midway once. And she said this, the water was totally still. Not a ripple could be seen. The reflections were clearly visible. She said that she could even see a plane flying across in the reflection. She said that she felt God had said to her, that's how I want you to be, a mirror image of me. Reflect my goodness and love into the world. Grandma also went on to comment that it's not like that though. There are ripples and these ripples change things. They change the image. You know, sometimes the water becomes so rough that we actually lose the image altogether. And there are so many ripples that get in the way. Things in our lives, unfortunately, distort the beautiful image of God to others. And I think that in order to reflect God, then we need to spend time with him, spend time in his presence. The beginning of Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day with new possibilities. May you lead us beside quiet waters right now, this week. And may we allow you, Lord God, to refresh our souls so that we can reflect that beautiful mirage, mirror image of you to others. Amen. I'm now going to hand over to Chris for our time of sun worship together. Good morning, church. Good evening, church. Uh, welcome. As I was preparing this week, I felt, uh, I felt God just draw me to, to his son, to Jesus, um, and just wanted to create a bit of space to just dwell on him, dwell in his presence, to seek him, and to push into him. So that's what I'm hoping that this morning uh, we're able to do together. A few words from this song say, Jesus, you are where it all begins. Your beauty calls me deeper in. He says, stir a passion in my heart, God. Let it overflow and let it overflow. And that's what we want uh, from today, from this morning, this evening, whenever you're watching this, that the love of God uh, would overflow from your hearts, from your body, uh, into those around you uh, as you draw deeper and closer into, into the presence of Jesus. Sing together. Oh 
Holy 
and overflow and stir a passion in my heart God let it overflow let it overflow just going to play through these chords a few times and just offer up your own prayers to God in this moment Thank you, Chris. Lord God, please stir a passion within us, deepen our love for you. This week, I asked lots of you to think about what you're grateful to God for and to take a picture of what that was. Thank you so much for the amazing response that you did. You've seen loads of great pictures. Peter and Benjamin wanted to show us that they were grateful for Lego. Several families said they were thankful for autumnal adventures for an autumnal uh, for garden and autumnal colours. And one mum said, thank you for our beautiful local natural environment and the joy it brings us. Kevin, as you will see, has also taken some amazing pictures with lots of autumnal scenes in. As a family, we are grateful for family walks and fun times at school. Tyson and Stephanie are grateful for their time at Scotney Castle. The Banner family are grateful for respiratory and neurophysios. And we thought it would be really good to show you what the seniors community has been up to on a Sunday morning. They have been meeting fortnightly in one of the church halls. They are grateful that they can meet together again. And after we've looked at the pictures, we're going to hear from Bonnie, who Dillis interviewed this week. Lord, we thank you today for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you for your love, for loving us when we were quite unlovable people. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord.
Bonnie, it's really lovely to see you, having not seen you for such a long time. So welcome and thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Now, lockdown, the start of lockdown seems quite a long time ago and a lot's happened uh, in that time. So you were going to tell us about what that, that was like for you, um, the, the start of lockdown mm. and into lockdown. Um, yeah, so it was a really scary time. Um, Chris being a driving instructor obviously couldn't work. He was, he's a self-employed or was a self-employed driving instructor and we had this franchise fee um, where they where we needed to pay every week this large sum of money to be able to pay for the rent of the car, for the insurance, for the, the branding, for the students. We had to pay this massive amount of money. And then all of a sudden, and obviously the house bills and all of that, and all of a sudden our money had stopped completely. And um, going back before that, um, this job isn't the most secure of jobs within terms of hours and stuff. So we've never been that, like, been, haven't been able to save to have backup money or anything. It was a very uh, hand-to-mouth kind of existence. Not that we were deprived of things, but we, it w wasn't the most easiest. Um, and, yeah, all of a sudden we were faced with not having a job and not having any income. And it was really really scary yeah okay so you were in this really difficult situation mm -hmm. and uh thank you for i think painting a really clear picture of what that was like the the sense of insecurity there with chris's job so what happened next then um so we panicked I um, I'm a controller. I like to have control of things, and so I instantly phoned up um, Chris's parents and my parents, and was like, "Right, we won't have any money. I don't know how we're going to pay the bills. I don't know how we're going to pay our rent." And um, I also, actually, I also got in contact with my landlord and asked him to reduce the rent, and um, they actually agreed to reduce it only by fifty pounds a month but they, reduce, they agreed to reduce it and they didn't do it as a deficit, which was an amazing blessing. Mm -hmm. um, and I found up our parents. I was like, please, will you be able to help us? And not that they've got loads of money or anything, but um, maybe they would have been able to chuck us some money or at least food, <laughs> mm -hmm. and which they did. They agreed to, and they said, of course, we'll help you where we can. Um, but it was no guarantee in it. And it was just... It was very scary um, and so Chris went and uh, like spoke to loads of different people and I saw that Neil Clark was um, asking around for Downingbury Farm because that's where he works and um, see if there's anyone that would be able to help with deliveries um, and so Chris got quickly in contact with him and thank goodness they said yes. Um, and so he was able to instantly get this cash in hand job where he was able to pay the money straight into um, the business account and we were able to pay this franchise fee. So we knew that wasn't kind of, that still was able to be covered and we weren't going to be in a deficit or get into debt with that. Um, and also hopefully pay for food <laughs> and to pay for like to keep us warm. Um, and then also... With, uh, he also managed to find a job working in a care um, for care at home. Mm -hmm. It's basically a service where they go into people's homes and um, work with them. And one of the like, so one of the people he worked with was a person with early dementia. And he would take him out for walks and just do that kind of thing. Um, and it was yeah, it was just very like that happened. That all happened within like two maybe three weeks i think in my i might think he started working on the third week of lockdown with that so he had a two-week gap um and yeah finally we had a, like money that can't we could float upon slightly just keep our heads above water it wasn't it was just enough and i don't i wouldn't say we had quite enough to maybe pay for the all the food um mm. And actually, that's a couple in the church. They they 
they um, knew our predicament and they offered to pay buy us food shopping when they went so they would contact us and say do you need anything and actually a couple of times um I said yes please <laughs> we need some bread and milk or we need whatever we needed and they were so kind and they brought us stuff and they brought us extra as well and so like, at Easter time they came around and gave us Easter eggs for the boys and they were just so lovely and such a blessing and um it felt weird because they're younger than us as well so it was a weird weird transaction but it was yeah it was brilliant and I would highly highly recommend anyone if someone says can I help you to take it up if you really need the help because there's no shame in it and actually with that you are allowing them to be a blessing and allowing them to use their God-given gifts and that God's resources and it's just yeah it was it was lovely that that happened. Um, not only that, lovely you, Dillis. You, um, I think you sent out a message saying that we that you're going to do a crisis fund within church, um, and so I asked for some help. And every time, and um, the money came through, so we got given money for for help for paying the bills or whatever we needed it in that moment. Um, it always came when we were about to go over our overdraft. Mm -hmm. So I got a bit of overdraft for cushioning and then it was going to go over and it always seemed to top us up just enough to pay whatever bill or allow us to go, go to the shop and buy bread or milk or nappies. Um, and yeah, it was just, it felt so timed and not only that Rachel organized um, us to be able to have weekly meals sent from the church and I don't know if you were part of that team um, but there was a team of people that would come by every week stop and give us um, like a frozen cooked meal and then a bag of like tins and pasta and it was yeah I don't know what we would have done without that and it was such a blessing not to have to cook every single week as well uh, there was yeah, and sometimes I stocked piled the stuff in the freezer, and then I had like a like a cook free week. It's lovely, <laughs> it's like being on holiday moments. But in all seriousness, it was just such a it was such a blessing, and I yeah I I highly appreciate all the things, and thank you for giving into that money, and thank you that you were able to there. Yeah, the church was willing to use it as well and um, not only that we found that sometimes um sometimes that the money from the church or the money from the jobs that chris had wasn't enough because he was in a zero hour contract with well he wasn't on a contract with the town and farm and he was he had a zero hour contract with the care at home and sometimes there were weeks where it was really really quiet for him um and there were a couple of times when we had money posted through our letterbox. We had a couple of hundred one time and another hundred and some wired us some money. And I feel like God, maybe he, they, he prompted them. And maybe you were one of the people that you feel like God didn't prompt you. You just wanted to be nice. And I just want to say thank you because in that you really blessed us and God has used it. Yeah. And it, has really really helped um at the beginning of lockdown chris decided that he didn't want to do dr the driving anymore and he wanted a complete change of career and he was like i want to become a paramedic which sounded really silly in a pandemic i just he's got asthma i have ever since giving birth to rue i've got anxiety around um health stuff he wasn't an ill baby by any means at all it was a very healthy baby but you know hormones um so and covid kind of set my anxiety off as well and i was like oh i don't know i don't know and i um and he found a job that was an ambulance driver job that allowed you to train within the the um company to potentially become to paramedic level and he applied for the job and he got that job. So he actually ended up with three jobs within um, a month of lockdown. But the thing with this job is, so that we thought he got it in May. We thought, okay, he'll 
he'll start it within a couple of months because of all the paperwork and training. It didn't, it took until the 3rd of August for him to actually start his training. And it was a long process to get all the paperwork they needed and everything. Um, but I also, I, w- I did, I think I did tell Chris this, but I was also praying because because of his asthma, I was like, please Lord, let it happen after the big wave. Like let him have that job after the big wave. And yeah, he was very kind and he gave him the, he got him into that role after the wave so he could settle into it without being in the full mayhem of the, the curve that they keep talking mm-hmm. about. But yeah, I just, the reason I wanted to talk today and talk with, talk to you, Dillis, was I wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to say thank you to the people that were giving money and thank you that I don't think you realise the significance of handing that £10 over or £50 or however big or little that money was that you were able to give. I don't think you understand the significance of the fact that it enabled me to be able to feed my family, enabled me to give my children fresh nappies, it enabled us to keep um, the water running and keep this house ours. Like, it allowed all of those things. And yeah, it, were, it, it was God given. So thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you so much for sharing. and. Yeah, I just hope that as as um, others have listened uh, to what you shared, that they would the gratitude as I sit here, and as we're speaking together, uh, and the testimony of the way that God provided for you uh, as a family, and and I just yeah, I just love the fact that the money came through the front door, and um, yeah, that and it's so exciting, isn't it, when people follow when we all follow the prompts of God and you think really did you say that Lord and yet people have you know with the shopping that was brought to you it's just so lovely to hear God's family at work isn't it and how it's blessed you and Chris and um, Ezra and Reuben and 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 that you wanted to just say thank you um, today and I and I just I, I'm sure it's such an encouragement to to all of us um it's a real encouragement to hear what you've shared and i want to say thank you for doing that and um yeah and bless you and and chris and the boys and uh yeah uh in all that you're doing now thank you i would just like to just add one more thing in that i would like to say to anybody if you haven't been offered it and you do need it just ask and allow people to do that blessing thing and it might be that you ask the wrong person but they might be able to point you in the right direction and yeah just reach out because there's no shame in it the honesty is no shame in going i'm having a hard time whether or not it's paying bills or mental health there's people there to help and yeah i know this has been a ha- like this is a crazy crazy year and yeah god loves you and he wants the best Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Bonnie. It's been really good to see you and thank you for sharing. Thank you, Bonnie, for sharing with us today and for Dillis who's taken the time this week to chat with her. During the week, Corinna sent in this picture of a canoeist. It should come up now. And Corinna commented that this man just happened to be enjoying himself as we walked past. But then she also went on to say, But life, for many, like her, including her, has felt a bit like this in recent months. And I'm sure that the majority of you can identify with what Corinna shared with us. We're in amongst the rapids, it's rough, it's choppy, and we don't know what's up ahead. We need God to continue to help us steer our way through each day. And today, I'm going to use a serenity prayer written by Reinhold Neuber to enable us to do that with our praying. And we'll take each line at a time. Let's pray. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. Lord, we cannot change the circumstances that we find ourselves in with um, each day. We don't know what's going to alter with the restrictions of COVID-19 pandemic. And we may not be able to change some of the circumstances regarding our health 
or financial situations. Help us to accept these things with your strength and patience. Lord, give us courage to change the things we can and wisdom to know the difference. Lord, show us, please, if there are things that you want us to change. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time. Remind us that each day is a gift from you and it should not be overlooked or rushed through. Help us to trust you with each moment, however hard it may be. Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace. Lord, this is really difficult to do. Often we struggle to see the bigger picture, but Lord, we thank you that you know what that is and you can see it. Lord, give us acceptance where it's needed. Enable us to look up to you and not down into the hardships. And just as we lie beside quiet waters, may we experience that pathway to peace. Taking as he, Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as we would like it. Jesus, thank you that you take us as we are, that you loved us and the world enough to die for us. Lord, may we accept your gift of salvation. Trusting that he will make all things right, we surrender to his will. Lord, we choose to surrender to your good, pleasing and perfect will. that we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Our children's activities this week are continue to use Energise Kids Club by Post and today it's The Sewer. And alongside that you can watch a Veggie Tales which is called Madam Blueberry which explores how and why we should be thankful for all the things that we have. If you um, enjoy using Gather the Family from Youth for Christ, uh, today it's Living a Careful Life. And it looks at Jesus' words from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46, and asks the question, who are the least of these? If you're in school year seven and eight, you're using the uh, Young Youth Journal, which is from Holy Trinity Bolton, and then looking at 1 Corinthians 13. You can continue with that this week as well. And if you're a family and you're watching for the first time on YouTube and um, you don't receive our church emails and you'd like to be able to have access to these resources, please scroll down your screen, it's at the bottom here, and you'll see the links. Otherwise, you could continue watching and just uh, do that at the end of the service. For those of you who are in our church family, the links have already been sent to you in an email this week. And those of you, not forgetting, uh, who are in school years 9 to 13, you're going to have your Zoom session very soon. Our Bible reading today is taken from 1 Samuel 30, verses 1 to 8. Three days later, David and his men arrived back home at their town of Ziklag. The Amalekites had raided southern Judah and attacked Ziklag. They had burned down the town and captured all the women and children. They had not killed anyone, but had taken everyone with them when they left. When David and his men arrived, they found that the town had been burned down and that his wives, sons and daughters had been carried away. David and his men wept out loud and did not stop until they were completely exhausted. Even David's two wives, Anoam and Abigail, had been captured David was now in great trouble because his men were all very bitter about losing their children and they were threatening to stone him. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. And then he said to Abiathar the priest, bring me the ephod. So Abiathar brought it to him. David asked the Lord, shall I go after those raiders? And will I catch them? 
the Lord answered. Go after them. You will capture them and rescue the captives. I'm now going to hand over to Duncan, who's going to be sharing with us on burning desire. Thank you, Rachel, for that reading. The background to David's story is that he had fought many battles and had won them. And right here in this story, he was now being sent home because he wasn't trusted. And as he went home with all his men, unfortunately, as you heard in the story, David was in great trouble because his men were very bitter because they had lost all their children and their wives. And they were so angry with him, they were threatening to stone him. So there we have David at his lowest point. He is in absolute despair and distraught. What does he do? He seeks the Lord. And by seeking the Lord, David found strength in the Lord his God. And as we read the Psalms, which many of them were written by him, we have a great understanding of his faith with God. In Psalm 28, 7 to 8, it says this, The Lord is my strength and my shield, that's his protector, and my heart trusts in him and he helps me. And I've been thinking this week, I think for many of us it's been quite a difficult week for a host of reasons. We've seen more lockdowns or higher tiers happening across the nation. London is now at tier two. And as we look towards winter, which we've already already in, I feel for many of us, including myself, we've been quite downcast and feeling quite sad about all that is going on. And so with all this uncertainty, I want to invite you and me to look to the Lord, for him to give you strength as you trust him and as he helps you at this time. But you know, David went further than that. In the next verse in Psalms, it said, the Lord is the strength of his people. So whilst over these years I've been talking to you directly and thinking about myself, well, I'd like to talk about us in the plural, as in that reading. You see, with God, he is concerned about you and he's concerned about me but he's also concerned about the people of God together. And he has many names for the people of God. The people of God in the New Testament is called the church, the ecclesia, those who gather together in his name. The church is also in Revelation called the bride. And Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. And Christ died for his bride, his church, his people. And so for the next five weeks, I'd like to look at the pluralistic, us together, because I think sometimes we miss out of the strength and benefits of being together. And it's through the bride, the church of Jesus Christ, that God primarily fulfills his purposes. And so we want to be part of his bride, fulfilling all that God wants to do. In these difficult times, it is an incredibly refining time. We're all being refined, aren't we? Most of us are exhausted mentally and physically. Few of us have much air left in our tires. And so therefore, we need to focus on that which really matters to God and his priorities. Gone are the days, isn't it, for many of us when we're doing the things we think we ought to do out of duty or obligations. We used to be people pleasers, trying to do that which people would want us to do. Actually, we don't have that energy anymore. We just have to do the things we can do and the things we enjoy. So let us use this as an opportunity. Let us use our time well in the coming months. And to help us in doing that well, it's going back to that love that God has for you and me, as we then be a conduit and reach out to others, where the family of God are held together in the cords of love, as it says in Ephesians, so that when we do have setbacks in this pandemic, 
we will have that constant experience of God's love individually, but also corporately together. We often look back, don't we, and at the beginning of the church in Acts chapter 2 with nostalgia, where the church was born on the day of Pentecost, 3,000, and then another 2,000 came to faith. And then those folk were dispersed, and they went to places like Turkey. And then Paul did missionary journeys, and he visited them at least twice. But then 40 years on, the second or third generation, things weren't so going on so well. Of the seven churches referred to in Revelation, five of them were really struggling. Sardis had a reputation of being incredibly alive, but in fact they were spiritually dead. Laodicea was lukewarm. Ephesus, the jewel in that crown, that amazing city, had lost its first love. They were in danger of unwittingly being driven into oblivion. And one of my concerns, not only are we being refined because we haven't got the energy, but the Church of Jesus Christ has been refined because we are facing many difficult and obstacles and we need to be asking ourselves the questions, will we be fit for purpose when we come out of this pandemic? Will we be relevant? Will we be fulfilling the purposes and plans of God for this next period of church history? It's my desire that we will be part of that, that we will be on the right side of history, but we're going to have to reflect and look at it and work with it. We want to be like that church in Philadelphia, which was going on and which drew strength and trust from the Lord. Three ways that we're going to look at it today. For us to go on and be relevant, for us to, to be refined, but to be stronger through the refining process, not weaker. One of the key things, what we see that didn't happen in many of the churches and revelations, is that they no longer had a burning with a desire for the Lord. And we need to have that burning desire for the Lord and all that he has in store for us in his world. Like those churches in Revelations, they started well. And maybe you started well. Maybe you can remember when you first came to Christ and had that love, but don't have that burning desire today. I have to reflect on my own life, and I can think of all through my Christian life, those different phases of what it meant to have that uh, deep love for God. And it'll be different for many of us. For some of you, especially the older ones, wasn't it? It was with Billy Graham at those crusades you came to faith. For others, it was spring harvest, new wine, soul survivor, some of you in, in, in the church that we're now in. That's when you experience Christ. For me, it was when I was 13, 14 years old. I was in a boarding school. And that love of the Lord, I can still remember. My greatest joy was that I was adopted by God. I was his son. I belonged to him. But also important, not only did I belong to him, but I belonged to five other guys. We were a group together. And I found it better and stronger. That was what I remember, that first love. It wasn't easy. In fact, it wasn't a very happy year for me. It was a year that I was in my first year of, of boarding school at this small 13, 14 year old. And I had this huge, rogue, 17, 18 year old dormitory uh, prefect. He didn't have a love for God. He didn't like me going to voluntary chapel. And so when I went to chapel, he, he, he trumped up charges against me. And the result was, on, on three occasions, I was taken into the housemaster's office, bent over his desk, and then caned three times with a long stick. That happened three times. Not a very happy time. But that wasn't my focus. My focus was what Jesus was doing in my life. 
It was my love that he gave for me. And that spurred me on. And I want to be in the 21st century, in 2021, having that same love. Would you like to join me? Can we as a church go in the same love so that love that you've had will grow and change and develop as God wants? But for that burning desire for the Lord, three things. The first is this. If we want to, to do all that God was, let us do it through experiencing God's love today. Let's experience it. And then let's be a conduit to others. We remember, don't we, for Christ died for sins once for all, a good man on behalf of sinners in order to lead you and me to God, who first loved us. God is love. He is the source of love, and we are made in his image. May I suggest, we cannot truly know agape love for others, or in this very difficult time, sustain love for him and for others without first experiencing how much he loves us. You see, it's out of our reflex response to this love is the motivation for all that we do and are going to do. Let me say it another way. Being made in the image of God, we are designed to run on love. God's love is our fuel. And you know what? There's unlimited supply. I want to quote something from Nick Harding's book, who is on the bride, and he says this another way. Imagine an electric car that is designed to run on clean, renewable energy, a car that has solar panels built in that constantly recharge its batteries. It never runs out of energy, never pollutes the atmosphere, and never depletes our planet or its natural resources. It is powered by the sun an inexhaustible supply of energy. Well, we are designed to be powered by the sun, an inexhaustible supply of love. All other motivations depletes us or damage those around us. So let us go to the sun for his inexhaustible love. There is one problem, though. We do come from a culture and a background that for most of us, we see love as a transaction rather than a connection. We're more transactional with our love with others and with God than relationally. And so I'd like to invite you and I to move deeper into visceral gut love. Viscera is a medical term for your internal organs. If we can live with that gut love, That will be our energy and what will motivate us in how we go forward in this difficult time. This is more than transactional, intellectual, or emotional. God is calling us to go deeper into what we already know. Yes, let us be energized and motivated by God's love. This gut love is a connection as elements of intuition, absolute conviction, emotion, affection, and passion, as well as connection to his very presence. And of course, there's many ways that we can experience this gut love, depending on your love language. If your love language is time, you need to spend time with God to have that gut experience of his love. If your love language is acts of service, it's going out and doing acts of service commissioned by God that will help you deepen your love for him. And of course, especially with shutdown, for many that's been really difficult and that therefore many have really struggled that they haven't been able to express this form of love. I want to invite you and me and the people of God that we together dig deep and have this visceral love 
that will give us motivation and will give us conviction and will give us the strength as we trust the Lord to do that which he wants at this most difficult time. And it's always in that context, secondly, that to help us to go forward in this, we do need to turn from everything that hinders us with the Lord and, and turn to him. Let me read Acts 3, 19 to 20, in a quite a different version to what you may be used to. Repent. Turn from the wrong and turn to God. He will forgive your sins. You will then have those times, that's kairos, those opportunities, and it's only then to have spiritual strength and refreshments which come from the Lord himself. And so as we go through this time, if you want to be spiritually strengthened and refreshed by the love of God, we need to ensure that we regularly have clearing out of the deck everything that is unhealthy and unhelpful, and then drinking in from his love and his forgiveness and his acceptance. This is a beautiful way to live with forgiveness and freedom. We don't have the energy or, or, or the time to be weighed down by guilt and failure. For these are not words in God's vocabulary for those who are forgiven. We need to be people who live in deep gratitude and humility. For that is the key to living in life, in love. We won't need to hide from the Lord in shame and like Adam and Eve in the garden. Rather, we want to run into his arms and ask for forgiveness and wallow in his amazing love. So thirdly, and finally, as we seek to experience daily and into 2021, this gut love, which is made possible as we live in forgiveness and draw closer to God, he's inviting us, if we want to be relevant, if we want to be effective, if we want to be fit for purpose, to make really good investments, to invest in the things that are of eternal value that he wants you to invest in. He says, we need to store up for ourselves treasures in heaven where no moths or vermin can destroy it, where thieves cannot break in or steal, because that's where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And Jesus is wanting us to make it clear that we will invest in his kingdom and his purposes. He says this 126 times in the New Testament through the Gospels. He wants to rule through you, through the people of God, through his bar bride, to fulfill his purpose. So what is it he's asking us to do? I love it, David did that. In the middle of that reading we had, David asked the Lord, shall I go after the raiders? Will I catch them? And so you and I, at this difficult time, we've got little energy. We want to use it well. Let's spend time investing in the good things. What is it that God wants you to invest in? And how are you going to do it? If we talk in the plural, we as a church have been asked by God to have a community larder. We haven't got lots of things. We haven't got the energy. But we've got a community larder. And at the moment, it is giving food for over 100 people each week. For the, our own church family, we're trying to live out Acts 2, where no one is in need. And so we have a crisis fund, which we heard earlier about uh, through Bonnie. And now we have church online. We were driven into it, and we're using it as an opportunity to invite others, wherever you are, to come and join, to worship the living God, to receive from him, so you are f uh, receive from him in song and in word, so that you are spiritually fed and renewed, and so you have strength for the day as you trust him. For us, we've also, of course, got the sanctuary development where we have that wonderful vision where we'll be able to stream our service to you who's watching today and anyone else who joins us in the future. 
We also want to be an inclusive church, so those who are housebound, either because of ill health or because they're looking after somebody with ill health. So, we're talking about the bride, and as we talk about the bride of Jesus Christ, the first thing we're looking at is the bee, burning with desire, given to us by God with a gut love. As we leave behind, that's not helpful. Taking on that which is helpful. And then just prioritizing, seeking first that which is important with you. He will give you the strength. He will help you as you trust him. And then in the coming weeks, we'll look at it further on what that will look like. Thank you so much. I hope you are excited as we go into 2021. God bless. Let's now sing uh, and uh, to our King of King and Lord of Lords. When my hope and strength is gone, you're the one who calls me on. You are the life, you are the fight that's in my soul. Oh, your resurrection power burns like fire in my heart. When waters rise, I lift my eyes up to your throne. We are more than conquerors through Christ. You have overcome this world, this life. We will not bow to sin or to shame. We are defiant in your name. You are the fire that cannot be tamed. You are the power in our veins, O oh Lord, our God, our conqueror. Sing into the night, Christ is risen and on high. Greater is He living in me than in the world. No surrender, no retreat. We're free and we're redeemed. We will declare over despair, you are the hope. We are more than conquerors through Christ. You have overcome this world, this life. We will not bow to sin or to shame. We are defiant in your name. You are the fire that cannot be tamed. You are the power in our veins, O oh Lord, our God, our conqueror. Nothing is impossible, every chain is breakable with you. We are victorious. You are stronger than our heart. You are greater than the dark with you. We are victorious. Nothing is impossible. Every chain is breakable with you. We are victorious you are stronger than our hearts 
Whatever today may hold, whatever tomorrow might bring, the future is secure, for Christ is with us. The same yesterday, today and forever. Live each moment with him in quiet confidence and joyful celebration, for he is ours and we are his for all eternity. Go in peace and the joy of God.